Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Well, welcome to Postscript. My name is Michael Sullivan, business administrator here at FaithBridge, and I'm joined by Dan Slagle, our care and bridging pastor, who just brought us part four of our Joyful series on a message called Joy Through Surrender. Thanks for being here, Dan. You bet. It's a great message today. I think it really met people right where they were at, and we had a lot of questions that came in because of it. Okay. So let's get going. Uh, the first question, I think it's a really great one, is... You were talking about uh, ambition and uh, things like that, and somebody said, well, how will I know if my ambitions are in the wrong place? Will God send me a stop sign, or how do I know if if my ambitions are in the wrong place? Yeah, that's a great question to ask. Um, God doesn't usually communicate quite so explicitly. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I would um, take a a multifaceted approach. First thing I would do is examine my heart and my overall walk with the Lord. Hmm. Uh, am am I in good fellowship with Him right now? So, honestly, you know, mm-hmm. meeting with Him in the Word, praying. Uh, a- am I involved in a local body uh, for purposes of correction and, and growth and those kind of things? Mm-hmm. Uh, if If all of that is in good shape, then we can sort of begin to narrow the focus a mm-hmm. little bit. Uh, we can begin to ask ourselves, you know, what what is my motive for doing this? Mm-hmm. Uh, when I think about this opportunity, it, what is the first thing that comes to my mind? Is it to increase my bank account, <clears throat> to make a name for myself? Mm-hmm. A- a- am I at the top here or am I thinking in terms of bringing glory mm-hmm. to Him? Uh, Subjectively th- speaking, I, I think there's something to be said for uh, inner peace or a, a lack thereof. Mm-hmm. If every time you're involved in, in this, something's not right, that, that's probably a pretty good indicator of the Holy Spirit's Off. saying, um, I would definitely seek the wisdom of others to double check. I, w- we can deceive ourselves so easily. Mm-hmm. So being a part of a local body and perhaps uh, even better, a grow group mm-hmm. of people who know us, uh, that we trust, who can speak truth into our lives, a, a combination of all of those things, I think, can work together to help us gain a clear picture. Yeah, that's really helpful. Uh, and I think you're right. The The wisdom of the counsel of many is Amen. so helpful, especially in trying to discern what is God saying to me. So that's good. Thank you. Uh, maybe a, a second question that came in was you, you kind of mentioned in your sermon um, that there were some personal steps that you took, but that you didn't have time necessarily to, to dive into all of that in the sermon. Why don't you take us through? What were some of the, the <laughs> steps that you took uh, to really get your focus back onto God and um away from some of the the church planning stuff that that you talked about. Sure. Well, uh, one of the first things that I did was go and seek some help. Hmm. Uh, I knew I was not in a good place, certainly not the ideal place Hmm. for ministry. (laughs) Excuse me. And so I went to some older, more seasoned uh, pastors and believers and just told my story honestly. Hmm. Another thing that I did and I, I'm going to chalk this up to divine inspiration. I sat down and made a list of the 20 people that I felt like knew me the best in the whole world hmm. and really had nothing to gain or lose in their relationship with me. They just knew me. Mm-hmm. And I wrote a letter to each one <clears throat> describing where I was, hmm. asking them, you know, what gifts have you seen in me honestly? And <clears throat> does this strike you as a fit or... Uh, Is my misery index here purely Mm self-inflicted or is God using this? And every one of them wrote me back. Really? Yeah, every single one. Wow. And I got such tremendous guidance from that, just just a lot of help. Becky, of course, was tremendously Mm -hmm. helpful in that whole process. So if I were to point to anything, I would would say 
humbling myself enough to seek the wisdom of others. Mm. You know, we, we are loath to admit failure, mm. especially if it's something that's relatively high profile, at least for us. Mm -hmm. It's hard to go to someone and say, this isn't working. Mm. <clears throat> what do you think? Yeah. But that, that honestly was the key. Those are the things that God used. Uh, those people were able not only to impart their own wisdom, but they recommended good books for me to read. Mm. Uh, I remember I wound up getting connected to a particular counselor I would not have found otherwise hmm. who gave me a lot of guidance. So the body of Christ really came through. And it's so helpful when you have multiple people speaking in because you typically do see themes yeah. of uh, we really see this in you or um, maybe you hear the same name of a counselor over and over or something sure. like that is yeah. extremely beneficial. Well, that's helpful. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, switching gears just a little bit, uh, the generosity moment that we had yeah. today was highlighting India, which we just returned from, had the opportunity to go uh, with Hope for Today and mm -hmm. go over there and train some pastors and some church planners ourselves. So uh, maybe want to share each of us a high point of the trip or something that yeah. God really encouraged you with over there? Sure. Um, <clears throat> Honestly, Sully, the, the high point of the trip for me was the opportunity to do ministry with you. Hmm. Uh, it was just a lot of fun to go together and enjoy that culture, but also to see the impact that you're making in the lives of those people. I saw a lot of appreciation on their part, um, just a lot of gratitude for, for what you brought to the table. And, you know, <laughs> as the older guy, it, it warmed my heart to see you moving onward and upward in what God has, has for you to do. Well, I appreciate that. It was a, a great trip. I really, every time I go over there, I'm so challenged by their faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people are dealing with some tough stuff. I mean, persecution yeah. is no joke. I mean, you were uh, even sharing with our staff this week, the guy who lifted up his shirt and said, here's the stab marks yeah. that uh, are real. And I was... Uh, meeting with two pastors um, right there from Kerala who were wanting uh, to just build a church and the government had shut that down. Mm. And so I was so inspired by this man and we talked about this. Um, he and his wife just said, well, the church has got to be somewhere. Can't be here. Why not our house? And so they retrofitted their house so that 35 people could wow. come and gather on a weekly basis. Wow. I mean, it just was such commitment. Yes. Uh, and, you know, it really challenged you to, to say and ask of yourself, you know, what what commitment do I have to the Lord even here? And Amen. so um, just a great trip, uh, always inspiring, always encouraging. So thankful to be a part of that ministry and, and just the effect they're making. I mean, 5,000 churches planted Blows my since mind. 2009. Every time. Really amazing. So God's doing a good work there. And God's doing a good work here at FaithBridge. Love the stuff he's doing. So thanks for going to India together, and thanks for being here today at PostScript. Sure. We thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you back next week as Ken is going to come and round out our joyful series. So we'll see you back next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.